welcome to a day in the life of a death doula with myself, Mandy Benwalid and Jill Shock. This is the uh, whole crux of this talk. Run us through a typical day as a death doula. I feel like a day is kind of hard to like fully gauge what you actually do. So let's kind of talk about it in the context of a week as a death doula. That's a, yeah, that's probably a better way to break it down. Um, so over time as a business owner, I've had to really uh, hone in on routine, block scheduling, um, things like that to keep myself organized because I have one, two, three, like four or five aspects that go into making income with my business. So uh, the first client of that is, I mean, the first aspect is obviously clients. So that that'll take up about 50% of my time, depending on how many clients I have. I like to keep a census of anywhere from six to 12, and that will fluctuate. This year in particular, post COVID, I started the year off with 16 patients in um, January. A month, so right? Yeah. 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 So, and they rotate in and out. Um, so that's, I keep an eye on my census. I, I do, you know, check-ins, weekly check-ins. I do drive-bys with supplies and just to say hi, you know, things like that. Um, then I have my mentorships. So I started a mentorship program about a year and a half ago, um, just for people who want to take their training deeper one-on-one, -on -one, uh, be really involved with an entrepreneur, like startup community, kind of like an incubator. Um, so I've been working on that with my mentorships and my intentional community. So that takes up, you know, uh, another piece of the pie chart. Um, and then I do, uh, let's see, uh, and I meet with my mentees every week and we also do a community group every week. Um, and then I have projects, events, and collaborations. So I'm constantly working on other things with colleagues, um, you know, workshops and events that we could do also in the community, community education. Um, and then I uh, pretty much set all this up on Sunday. I check in with my admin and I set up my um, whole week of list of task things to do. Uh, and I do work weekends and on calls sometimes. Wow, that's like a pretty big plate um, to busy. have. So that's, so what, what, what I like about what you're doing is you're not only, you know, you're not only a doula, but you're an active member of the community and um, you're also trying to help other doulas. And so I think that's really great. And that kind of can show a lot of us the spectrum and it shows a lot of us that you don't just have to be, you know, working with clients full time. Although that is your main focus, you can still run a business or offer these services and still be involved and have time to do other things. Yeah. Um, but on that note, I think it would also be helpful for everyone. You know, out of that entire pie we just talked about, can we kind of dive in a little bit more onto the sliver of of the client side? So maybe run us through almost like the life cycle. Um, no pun intended, I guess, but uh, to, like quite literally the life cycle of your family is like, how does it start? Is it like a phone call and then a consultation? And like, what are you doing with families in particular every week? So my family, so I have my web, website set up for clients. I have a client portal where you can go in and fill out an intake form, which then schedules our free consultation. I give 45 minutes for those consultations. We might not use it, but a lot of times families have a lot to talk about. So I use that 45 minutes to really discern what their needs are and then what services specifically I can offer them and show them my packages, my prices, or if they wanna work on a la carte or hourly rates, or if they don't wanna work with me at all, that's fine. So we do the consultation, they decide whether or not they wanna move forward. And then we set, um, dates up to follow up with the services that they need. Now, a lot of times how long I'm with a client will range depending on what kind of illness they actually have. So for example, if someone has stage four pancreatic cancer, I know that I probably only have about a month, if that, to get everything done and together. Someone with Alzheimer's dementia might be a client that I have for years. 
right? Um, I also do medical aid and dying with clients, which is legal in this state under the End of Life Options Act in California. Um, so sometimes I just have people who hire me to show up the day of and help them uh, be present and walk them through the medical aid and dying process. So it really depends. Like I can meet a client and die with them in one day, or I could be with them for years. So that's why the consultation and having an organized intake form for starting up doulas is really important. So you get all those pieces and you have a record of who's spoken to you and your notes and all that. So it's good for files as well. So that's how it all starts with the clients. Okay. And how often, I mean, even especially with COVID out of curiosity, how often are you meeting with families or with your patients? Like that in also, a week or in a month even? That also depends on, again, the need. Some families want like one information session, session jam one and done, and then they take it and go forward. Some, pa some patients I'm dropping by multiple times a week because they're actively dying. Um, so it really just depends on where they're at with the need, which is why I have to set most of my time aside for clients because I have to be flexible because you never really know uh, what's gonna happen. 